Indeed, hey, ladies and gents, and welcome back to DCS World with Mags, and welcome aboard a machine that I really should have featured on the channel a very, very long time ago, but one that, with the current buzz about helicopters, seems appropriate to put up now. This is the KA-50 Black Shark. So, before we go too deep in this video, I do want to say that I do not consider myself to be 100% proficient with this machine. In fact, I'm little better than an amateur in this particular machine. I bought this module years ago, it was one of the earliest modules I ever got in DCS. However, it's one of those modules that every time I went to learn it, I wound up flying something else instead. It is something that I am correcting now, but as with all DCS modules, it does take time. Anyways, time to get the weapon systems online here. So, down on the left hand side we're turning on the targeting laser. I'm getting everything prepared for this mission now as we're going through the mountains because we're pretty much going to clear the mountains and be in engagement range. Now we've just turned on the targeting computer TV, we are going to change it over to black and then I'm going to play with the contrast a little bit here just so we can see and I'm going to explain why in just a moment. But first let's go over the mission details. So this mission is actually a pretty simple one. We're just doing a quick raid on a US logistics base and a special US convoy. The US convoy isn't on site yet. We do have a spotter on the road that is going to notify us when the convoy is passing their location. And when that happens, we will have to move down, locate the convoy and eliminate it. The logistics base itself is defended. In fact, if you look at the map on the right hand side at the moment, you'll see the blue shaded area. That is the radar coverage for the anti-air defenses that are currently set up around this logistics base. I know where the base is in the center of those, but that lineup of anti-aircraft guns means that I'm only gonna be able to approach it from one side, which is the direction we're coming in from now. We are, of course, flying through the mountains in Iran and our targets are US. Uh, might think of this as the Russians getting back at all the US missions that I've been making for the Hornet recently in this part of the world. But anyways, now our loadout. I'm sure you've noticed on the external shots of the helicopter at this point, we are carrying unguided rocket pods. I loaded them on just in case I could use them as there is a point where the convoy that's going to be passing through will be outside of that anti-aircraft defense. However, I never end up using them in the mission. The primary weapon that I will be using for this flight is the Vika Laser Guided Anti-Tank Missile. At least, I think that's the pronunciation. V-I-K-H-R. Regardless, this Laser Guided Anti-Tank Missile is capable of Mach 1.8 and will blow cleanly through a thousand millimeters of armor. It is quite the nasty piece of work and I'm carrying 12 of them into combat. Now, I said I was playing around with the contrast, and that would be important very soon. The KA-50 uses the TV that you see mounted in the center of the console to locate targets. Now, the missiles themselves are laser-guided, which comes from a laser that's mounted right next to the camera in the nose of the helicopter. The camera itself is used to aim the laser and locate the targets. This all makes pretty much simple sense until you come to the targeting system. The targeting system for the KA-50, that is the KA-50's ability to track a moving target while, uh, while being able to fly around and even track a location, is based both on the mapping system and based on what the TV itself sees, particularly the contrast. The targeting system takes the image that the camera picks up and tries to pixel track, essentially, various objects within the camera's field of view. When you as the pilot designate a particular blob of pixels, because this is all the targeting system actually sees as being a target, the computer will track that blob of pixels, and it does so by how that blob of pixels contrasts against everything else. This does lead to a problem with the KA-50's targeting system. What it means is that at 12 o'clock noon on a perfectly clear day when you have perfect lighting conditions, the targeting system is amazing. It will lock and work perfectly because it has the best quality image that it can get. However, the earlier in the morning it gets, or the later in the afternoon it gets, as those long shadows start throwing their way across the lands and things start, the lighting conditions aren't quite as good, this targeting system becomes a little bit less effective and then if you have any kind of cloud cover it gets even worse 
I'd like to point out again that um, I'm flying in the middle of a thunderstorm at four in the afternoon in this particular mission. So the targeting system is not actually going to work properly. In fact, the camera itself, without uh, outside of actually adjusting the contrast, was actually having trouble even seeing anything that was on the ground. Because I've adjusted the contrast in order to see, everything that was remotely shadowed has become black, the sand has become off-white, and while I can look at this screen and I can see that's a hangar, those are shipping crates, and what I just hit then was one of a couple of fuel trucks parked next to that hangar, and I can see there's a bunch of trucks parked there in front of a communications base with two antennas out of the top. The targeting system is just seeing a massive blob of black that it can't tell the difference between at the moment. So while I can point the camera at a location that I want to fire a missile at and attack the location with no problems whatsoever, I can't actually tell the targeting computer at the moment to track a moving target here because it cannot identify any of these pixels that are moving around that I can clearly see is a truck as actually being a truck or being something that it should be able to track. I hope I'm describing that correctly. The That's as I understand it, how this targeting system works. And it does seem to operate that way. Anytime I've had to adjust the contrast in order to be able to see targets that are on the ground due to adverse lighting conditions, I've almost always lost the ability to track moving targets unless you get incredibly close, which I can't hear because obviously this area is actually covered by uh, mostly M163 uh, radar-guided anti-aircraft guns, but there is a few other things floating around in there as well. Now, speaking of that, at this point, I'm actually just about getting ready to break away. This was only ever meant to be a quick raid on this particular logistics base, and we are starting to move inside radar range. At this point, the ground defences can detect me, but I am not currently within firing range. So I'm going to lob off one more missile here and bring my total missile count down to 8. You can see that in the centre bottom of the screen, uh, where it says 09 at the moment. That is the number of missiles that I have left. And then I'm going to break off and we're going to start heading down the right -hand, uh, southern right-hand side of the radar range as we see it on the map at the moment. Now, I know this is the direction the convoy is going to come from. I just have to wait till I get my notification that the convoy is entering the area, and we are going to take a stab at it. Oh, if I haven't mentioned it yet, the KA-50 is absolutely beautiful to fly. It is fantastic fun to just fly around, and it's actually quite a stunning looking helicopter as well. I quite like it. It's very brutal and angry looking on the outside. I mean, I don't think it looks as good as a Hind, for example, but it is still a fantastic looking helicopter. Anyways, at this point, I'm just getting ready to leave the area, but before I go too far, I'm slowly moving down a little bit and letting the camera track the logistics base, just so I can see whether or not there's anything else that was particularly important in there that would be worth knocking out. At this point, I'm just checking in front of the hangars in order to be able to see the fuel truck that I actually destroyed in the first shot give me a better look at it, see whether or not I'd done enough damage. It looks like the explosion may have actually taken out two trucks there. The third truck moved up in amongst the wreckage where I was destroying the, the cargo trucks. And then I spot these. We've got three tanks, or at least armoured vehicles, that are down. I couldn't get a good look at these before because the checkpoint buildings were actually in the way. But there's three vehicles in here. Now I've really only got one missile that I can afford to fire off at this point, I want to keep the rest for the next target, and of course I totally screw up the shot. While I can't reliably track moving targets at this time of day in these lighting conditions with the way I've got the camera set up, those are stationary, which means I could have just locked the laser onto the position at the base of one of these tanks, fired that missile off and I would have killed one of them. Instead I tried to manually guide it, and I missed it. As simple as that. I, I stuffed up. My bad. But anyways, that is down to eight missiles, and we have a convoy to go and find. Alright. 
If you look at the top right hand corner of the screen to the right hand side, you'll notice that about 10 minutes have gone past at this point in time. It took that long to actually locate this convoy. I received the notification that they had entered the area about two minutes in, but because of the blue fog due to the thunderstorm in the background, as well as the current performance of the camera, trying to find this convoy was a pain in the ass. But as you can see, it's a convoy of six Abrams. They're making their way towards the logistics base that I currently just attacked. They will be resupplying there, or at least that would be what they were going to do. And then they'll be heading off to harass some Iranian tanks on the front line. So we're going to make sure they don't get there. Impact on one. Now, because I can't track these at the moment, because the targeting system won't, doesn't like the current conditions, I'm doing what I did with the last shot, but with a little bit more preparation this time. I'm manually guiding the laser. Once I destroyed the lead tank, the convoy came to a halt, destroyed the tech, second tank in the convoy. Now I'm going to swing the targeting computer or the, the targeting laser over to the end of the convoy, destroy the tail tank to box them in on the road, and then start firing at the tanks in the middle, although it's only going to be a matter of time before those tanks start moving again. And missile away. The system itself is actually very simple for firing. Once you've got it all set up, you simply point the camera at the target you want to destroy. That puts the laser on the target, providing it's turned on, and the convoy started moving, so I'm going to have to guide this shot in. When you're in a position, it creates a little circle on your HUD. You put the missile launch uh, reticle over the circle, pull the trigger, and the missile fires, and it's simple as that. Unfortunately, I took a little bit too long actually locating that convoy, and I now have to bug out of the area because I'm being engaged by something much higher up the food chain. Remember I mentioned at the start that there were some other interesting air defense features that I put into this particular mission? The second I started attacking that logistics base, two F-18s departed from Stannis to head into this area to start flying a cap. And they've apparently just arrived. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. There will be more KA-50 as I spend more time with the aircraft and learn more of its features. Also, the F-18 will be coming back to the channel very soon, and I'll be taking a look at the new Yak as well. Until then, remember to click that like button, share and subscribe if you would like to see more, and as always, take care.